Hi, welcome to Global One Media. Today I'm joined by Eugene Williams, who's the chairman and CEO of Promis Neurosciences, uh, which is a leading uh, development stage biotechnology corporation focused on discovering and developing antibody therapeutics, selectively targeting toxic oligomers implicated in the development and progression of neurodegenerative uh, diseases. Hi, Eugene. Thank you for joining us today. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having us. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. So to start off, could you please uh, give us a brief overview of yourself and of Promis Neurosciences? Sure. So uh, I, I've been in the biotech industry for about 40 years, as have many of my colleagues at Promis. And part of why we're involved in this is that one area of great unmet need that remains in, in our careers and in medicine is Alzheimer's disease. A Promise was founded about seven years ago. Uh, Toronto Stock Exchange listed initially. We've just listed on NASDAQ. And uh, we're founded based on some cutting edge science. I mean, I've been involved in creating antibody therapies for, for decades now, and they've been around for decades. Very, very valuable therapies, therapies like Humira that people may have heard of for rheumatoid arthritis. But what we do is take a very unique approach to developing antibody therapies and vaccines that can selectively target misfolded proteins that are involved in disease. So um, the company is moving forward, as you said, and I'm sure we'll get into more detail about exactly what's up. Excellent. Uh, yeah, and you, uh, you have a, a promising pipeline of products that uh, target misfolded proteins uh, and some of your treatments for uh, Alzheimer's disease, uh, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, uh, and multiple system atrophy are now in preclinical phase approaching the clinical trials. Uh, could you tell us you know, more about those treatments and, and the factors that help those treatments reach the preclinical uh, phase? Absolutely. Yeah. So first, a little bit about proteins and misfolded proteins. Mm -hmm. I mean, while you're listening, your body is making hundreds of millions of proteins, and they all have to fold into exactly the right shape to do their job. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes they fold into the wrong shape, and they're just cleaned out. But other times they fold into the wrong shape, and they spread almost like a virus, and they, right. they start causing harm. So neurodegenerative diseases, which as the name implies, means some neurons are being killed, nerves are being killed, whether it's cortical neurons in your brain, or motor neurons in your spine, or Alzheimer's and ALS, mm -hmm. misfold proteins are causing harm. Now, the properly folded protein is critical for brain health. The misfolded protein causes disease. So critical for a therapy to only target the bad guy. Think about cholesterol. You know, you have good cholesterol and bad cholesterol. Yep. You only want to get the bad cholesterol. So our portfolio is a combination, is a, a number of therapies that selectively target different misfolded proteins that in their normal form help your brain be healthy, mm -hmm. but in their bad form cause a disease. Amyloid, or Alzheimer's. TDP43, ALS, alpha-synuclein, which is multiple system atrophy in Parkinson's. Now, the way, the, the most critical thing that we do in, in assessing our, our programs and making sure that they're ready for clinical trials is we test how well they bind mm -hmm. to biosamples from pe patients with disease. So people who donated their, their brains to science, for example, for Alzheimer's, we use that brain material to show that our antibodies are exquisitely selective only for the toxic form of amyloid, right. the mis the protein, not the other forms. And that's one way that we critically understand scientifically that our products are differentiated, and hopefully that'll that'll result in better safety and efficacy in the clinic. That has to be tested, of course. Now, the other thing about our portfolio is we have an extremely efficient engine for generating new products and new intellectual property. Mm -hmm. That's a great value to potential uh, to the to the markets in general to farm up potential partners, et cetera. And more and more diseases are understood to be believed to be caused by misfolded proteins. Mm -hmm. So as that understanding expands, we're able to address that with a broader and broader portfolio of intellectual property and products. Very interesting. Um, and also, what can you tell us uh, about other treatments that you're currently uh, developing, such as those for uh, schizophrenia and uh, Parkinson? Exactly. Well, schizophrenia in particular is one perfect example of where the understanding of misfolded proteins mm -hmm. playing a role is, is driving our innovation. So there's a protein called DISC-1, which is implicated in schizophrenia. It can misfold and help cause that disease. And there are other proteins that may misfold as well. We're working with one of the world's leaders in that area, a guy named Karsten Korth, an academic, and we started focusing on how do we address selectively misfolded disc one in order mm -hmm. to help treat 
some, if not all, schizophrenia patients. It's probably going to be a, a subset, maybe half the patients. The, the list goes on of proteins that can misfold involved in disease, a protein called amylin. Okay. It interacts with insulin. It can misfold and cause type 2 diabetes. So we, we, we are uh, expanding our portfolio um, to address misfolded protein diseases. Fantastic. Um, and also we, uh, we read that the uh, Alzheimer's fail is advancing in blood-based uh, diagnostics that could allow early detection even before symptoms develop. Uh, could you maybe tell us a bit more uh, about how uh, your therapeutic vaccines might help in that area? Absolutely. So this is one of the most exciting developments in the Alzheimer's field in a while, which is now there's the ability to detect in blood things that measure the disease process in your brain. So, for example, when neurons die, you have 100 billion healthy neurons, but they start being killed by toxic oligomers. When they die at a faster rate than normal, then there's a protein called or there's something called neurofilament light, which mm -hmm. is elevated. And in fact, many of the people who develop these biomarkers are based in Sweden. Kai Blenau and Hendrik Zetterberg. That's really been the center of innovation for a lot of what's going on here. Now, there are other biomarkers like phosphotau, and there's, you know, there's a technically long list, but the bottom line is the ability to detect Alzheimer's pre-symptomatically has really uh, come to prime time. Here's what's exciting about that. There's a 20-year period between mm -hmm. when you start having pathology, that's when toxic oligomers kill neurons in your brain, And when you actually are symptom, when you actually have symptoms, that's a window of opportunity to detect and prevent. That's the holy grail in Alzheimer's disease. Now, the field has evolved a great deal, so right. that we think that that early detection is quite feasible. We have the ability because of our unique platform, we, we can make a vaccine version of our antibodies, and we've done that already. And so far, it looks very good. Anybody who's been following COVID knows the first thing you test with the vaccine is serology. Do you get a high level of antibodies? We had a very nice antibody response, and our antibodies are selective to our therapeutic vaccines. What that means is, as the world of treating Alzheimer's or preventing Alzheimer's evolves, others are developing you know, diagnostics that hopefully can detect, we might have a extremely valuable preventive treatment. That's our hope with our therapeutic vaccine. That's Here. the goal. Anybody listening yeah. should know. If you've had someone in your family, as mm -hmm. I have, my grandmother didn't remember my name the last time I saw her. We are on the cusp, I think, as an industry and hopefully Promise will contribute to being able to detect and prevent. Very, very cool. Um, also, we know that the life science sector is a collaborative uh, ecosystem. Uh, could you tell us more about your partnerships and collaborations in this uh, domain? Absolutely. So, I mean, the partnerships are mainly with your real leading academic organizations. Let me give you one example. For this therapeutic vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, there's a group called VIDO uh, in uh, Saskatchewan, Canada, who are real experts in creating vaccines. So we contribute our unique piece, which is the tiny piece of a misfolded amyloid pro uh, oligomer protein. They put that on a vaccine carrier and that creates a good vaccine. It's just more complicated than that. I mentioned Carson Korth, a great academic focus on DISC-1. So right. working with a woman named Michelle Hastings, who is a real expert in a different therapeutic approach called antisense oligonucleotides. It's mm -hmm. how you can knock down the expression of, of, of a protein or something else. So we're, we have a number of those academic collaborations. And of course, we're in constant discussions with other partners, you know, biotechs, pharma, yeah. and, you know, those are part of the, you know, the, uh, the way most people go forward and, and that could be in our future. Excellent. So uh, Eugene, as a last question, uh, what factors do you think will help uh, Promise Neurosciences outperform the market and what exciting development should investors be looking out for in the coming months? Yeah, I, I think um, you know, in the Alzheimer's field, and it, it, it's it, the most uh, this way that I've seen in 40 years in biotech, when anything good happens, everything rises. Yeah. Because there's so much unmet need. Uh, there have been three, since we started Promise, there have been three, you know, kind of positive announcements from really large pharma companies working on targeting amyloid, but not quite as selective as us. So close, but not all the way there. Mm -hmm. When they've announced positive data, there's been a $20 billion market cap increase for them and significant, you know, uh, uplift, you know, of, of other, you know, people in the Alzheimer's field. We raised capital very nicely last August, as did others after a Biogen positive announcement. Several others had raised Capital uh, after a Lilly positive announcement prior to that. Now the big the big event coming up in the Alzheimer's field that we're we're very 
enthusiastic about, you know, I, we have positive expectations, but it's biotech, so you can never be sure, of course, yeah. is Esai has a product called Lacanumab that is has finished a pivotal trial or will have by September 8th, and they're doing the analysis that should be announced at the end of November. Okay. You know, we suspect that could be a wonderful um, positive news for the entire Alzheimer's field. And, um, you know, what we've seen previously is that uh, there's so much unmet need in Alzheimer's that whenever there's a, a, a positive bit of news, mm-hmm. investors and others pour in and, and that has a great benefit, you know, for advancing the, the speed of, of, of progression of treatment. So we're hopeful uh, that that'll be a real positive and that could be, you know, a wonderful catalyst for the entire market. A lot of great information, Eugene. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we look forward to seeing the next updates and developments from Promis Neurosciences. Uh, so, yeah, thanks a lot for your time today. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. And thanks to everybody who listened. You know, I really appreciate it.